Hello and welcome back everybody, Tech Guy Charlie here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through about 20 new features and changes that the Android 12 or better known as One UI 4 update brings to Samsung Galaxy smartphones. And trust me when I say, you guys are gonna love these. And as always, the wallpaper link is in the video's description. This is my very own click. By the way, I'll be using the Galaxy S21 Plus to demonstrate these features because this phone is the first one to get the stable Android 12 update. But the feature set should be identical across every Samsung phone, so if you've got the Note 20 Ultra, you can watch this video. Anyways, enough chit chat, let's start the video. So Android 12 brings a new theming engine to these phones. If I drop down the notification panel, you'll notice that the colors are slightly different. I think by default these colors are blue and gray. Also if I open up apps like say for example if I open up calculator, you'll notice that the colors are slightly different. So this is because of the brand new theming engine. The phone kind of picks out the dominant colors in the wallpaper and uses them across Android system. So pinch in, tap on wallpapers and you will see a new option which says color palette. So this one picks out the dominant colors based on the wallpapers and you can use them across Android system. So you can see it gives you a little preview over here. And you can also apply these to the app icons. So if I press on done, you'll notice that the Samsung app icons have changed their color. Right now this only works for Samsung app icons. Unfortunately it doesn't work for every one of them. But yeah, you get the idea. Also, now whenever you set a photo as a wallpaper, the phone will actually show you the color palette. So let's use this photo as a wallpaper. It has a lot of yellow and greens. So we should get a yellow and a green color palette. So there you go, yellows and greens. So this one looks good. So we will set this as our color palette. And as you can see, this will change the theme of the phone accordingly. So our theme also matches our wallpaper. So that's awesome. This opens up a lot of possibility when it comes to customizing the phone. One UI 4 also brings improvements to the built-in photo editor. So what we are going to do is go into our gallery, open up an image and tap on the pencil icon to go into the image editor. And right away you can see the user interface is slightly different. Now there is a new feature on this new photo editor. If you tap on this button, you will see a new feature which says light balance. Now as the name suggests, this feature lets you adjust the amount of light in a photograph. So there you go, the photo looks much better now. Now this feature is not the same as brightness. If you adjust the brightness in a photo, you will see that the image kind of gets washed out. But if you adjust the brightness in an image using the light balance feature, you'll notice that the colors mostly remain intact. So this is such an awesome feature. I'm really looking forward to seeing this on my Note 20. Now, to demonstrate this feature, I had to turn the lights off. So here's the thing, even though the phone is at its lowest brightness, the screen is still fairly bright. And if you are using your phone at night when it is completely dark in your room, even this minimum brightness kind of hurts the eyes. So to solve this problem, Android 12 brings a new feature. So drop down the notification panel and look for extra dim and turn this feature on. And you will notice that the screen dims even further. It's even dimmer than the minimum brightness that you can set manually using the slider. And comparing this with the Note 20 Ultra, you can see this phone is also at its lowest brightness, but the screen is slightly brighter over here. Very, very useful if you are using your phone in complete darkness. Now, if you don't see extra dim in quick panel, what you'll have to do is press on the plus button and drag and drop extra dim from the available buttons. And once you do that, it will be right over here. Now, extra dim does have some settings. So if you long press over here, that will take you to this screen. You can increase its intensity to make the screen even more dim. Let's go into the device care because there is a new feature called protect battery that has been added. So let's go to settings, scroll down to device care, then tap on battery, scroll down, and then tap on more battery settings you'll notice that there is a new feature which says protect battery. What this feature does is that it prevents the battery from charging all the way up to 100%. You see, the thing is, lithium ion batteries don't like it when they're fully charged or when they're fully discharged. So enabling this feature will at least limit the maximum charge level to 85%, thus extending the overall lifespan of your lithium battery that is inside the phone. 
So theoretically, as an example, if the phone's battery is going to last about 3 years on average, enabling this feature will increase its lifespan even further, maybe till 5 years. Android 12 also brings a couple of new privacy features. So now, whenever an application is using your camera or your microphone, the phone will kind of let you know. So for example, if I launch Snapchat, Snapchat uses both the camera and the microphone and you will notice that there is a little green light over there. So that will indicate that the camera or the microphone is in use. You will also notice the exact same behavior in WhatsApp. So if I open up WhatsApp and start recording an audio note, you will see the little microphone icon and the green LED. So the phone is kind of letting us know that, hey, your phone's microphone is in use. In one of my tips and tricks video, I showed you that you can record a video by long pressing the camera shutter button in the photo mode itself. But here's the thing, you have to keep your finger on the screen. As soon as you let go of the finger, the video recording stops. And also you cannot switch the camera. So once the video recording is going on, you won't be able to use the ultra wide angle camera or the front camera. So that's one limitation of this mode. Now, One UI version 4 further improves on this feature and now if you press and hold the camera shutter button in the photo mode, now you can drag your finger to the lock icon and release. And this gives you a couple of controls on the screen. First off, now you can use the ultra wide or the telephoto lens when you record videos like this. Previously, you could not. Also, now you can switch between the front facing or the rear camera. So that's also a new feature. Plus, you can also turn the flash on or off. Then you can also take still photos. And obviously, you also get to pause the video. One limitation of recording videos in photo mode is that it does not do 4K. The maximum resolution is limited to full HD. So if you want to record in 4K, you will have to use the dedicated video mode. But still, I'm very happy to see that Samsung has improved the video recording feature in the photo mode. Another minor change in the camera is that when you are in the video mode, as soon as your finger touches the record button, the camera will start recording the video. On the older version, you actually had to press and let go. So if I keep my finger on the screen, it will not start recording. I have to press and let go to start the recording. This one will start the recording as soon as my finger hits the record button. Also, another minor change to the camera UI is that now the phone shows you the actual zoom level instead of showing you icons of trees. They've also made some changes to the pro video mode. It's really the exact same thing but with a fresh coat of paint. So what they have done is that they have replaced all of these icons with a description of what each and every one of these feature does. So I think, again, this is much better and easier to use compared to this one. Now, I believe one of the best changes that this update brings is to the menu that allows you to pick widgets. So what we are going to do is pinch in and tap on widgets and you will see this menu has been completely redesigned. All of the widgets are now grouped up under the name of the application they belong to. On the previous version, all of the widgets were grouped up alphabetically. So it was kind of cumbersome to search for a specific widget of an application. With this newer version, all of the widgets are grouped up under the name of the application they belong to. I've also noticed that on One UI 4, all of the widgets have rounded corners. And here's an example of this. Here's the Amazon Music widget. You can clearly see on One UI 4, they have rounded corners compared to One UI 3. And I think the rounded corners look good. And speaking of widgets, they've also added a new feature to the dual clock widget. So now the dual clock widget will actually tell you if it's daytime or nighttime in the city you've set. So right now it's nighttime in New Delhi, so that's why the widget is black. And it's daytime in Nashville, so it is white. So that's a neat little change. Lastly, they've also added a new calendar widget. So this one is new, month and today. And this widget shows you the month and the upcoming appointments or the schedule for the day. So, which one do you guys prefer, this one or this one? I prefer the newer one because it is compact and looks a lot cleaner and professional. Oh, and by the way guys, you can also access this widget through the always on display and the widgets that appear on the lock screen. So some of you guys may know that if you tap on the clock on the lock screen, that will open up widgets that appear on our lock screen. And here is our calendar widget. 
And like I said, you can also access these through the always on display. So double tap on the clock and swipe down and there you have it. So that is our new calendar widget. One UI 4 brings multi-window and split-screen view support to applications that do not support this feature. The best example of this is Instagram. So let's launch Instagram and open up Recents and if I tap on the Instagram icon, you will notice two new options, Open and Split-screen view and Open and Pop-up view. On the previous version, these two options are not available. So as you can see, those two options are missing. And if you tap on open in pop-up view, well, that opens up Instagram in this pop-up view. So that's actually pretty cool. Now you will have to enable this feature. So let me show you how. So drop down the notification panel, tap on the gear icon and go to advanced features. Then tap on labs and enable multi-window for all apps. So check this out. This is Instagram and the Chrome web browser running in split screen view. So this is something that was not possible on One UI version 3 and finally it works on One UI 4. So that's awesome. One UI 4 also brings a new option to the always on display and it's called show for new notifications. Now this new always on display mode show for new notifications will keep the always on display off until your phone gets a new notification. So to demonstrate, I'm going to send a text message onto this phone and you will see the always on display will come on. So here we go. So there you go. The always on display will be turned on and it will stay on until you dismiss that notification. So yeah, this is an awesome new feature of the always on display. Guys, if you have a Bluetooth headset or a speaker connected to your phone on One UI 4, you will be able to switch audio between all of these devices without the need to unlock your phone. So check this out on the always on display. If you double tap and swipe down, you have the music player widget and you see a little option over there which says media output. You can tap on this and the phone will give you an option to switch the audio output from the Bluetooth headset back to the phone or to the external Bluetooth speaker. So you must have all of these connected to the phone. Then you will get all of these options. You can also do this through the lock screen. So wake your phone up and then tap on media output. And that will again take you to this screen from where you can switch the audio output back to your phone or to the Bluetooth headset or to the Bluetooth speaker. Also, this is the screen from where you can activate the dual audio feature on Samsung phones. So just select two or more Bluetooth devices. And now the same song is playing on both of these devices. So check this out. This is the speaker and this is our headset. So both of these are playing the exact same song. So that's awesome, right? So it's really nice to see that the dual audio feature still exists on One UI 4. Now, speaking of privacy, there's also a new feature that will let you block applications from accessing the phone's camera and the microphone. To enable this feature, drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to privacy and turn off camera access then turn it off. And if you want, you can also turn off the microphone access. Now, I know what you guys are saying. You can always manually remove the camera permissions for applications and that will prevent the applications from using the camera, right? Well, here's the thing. If you disable camera access for some applications, for example, Snapchat, it will stop working. You have to allow Snapchat to use the camera and the microphone. But if you use this new feature, you will still be able to use all your applications normally. So now if I launch Snapchat over here, it will only see a blank screen. You can tap on cancel and there you go. Snapchat is working normally. You can even take snaps. It will just take a black snap. So it's like the camera is outputting black image. So there you go. With this feature, you can still use applications that mandatorily requires camera access, such as Snapchat. By the way, you can add a shortcut in the drop down notification panel, tap on the plus icon and drag and drop the camera access and the microphone access icons over here. To re-enable, just tap on these and now all of the applications will have access to the camera and the microphone normally. Now going back to the privacy settings, you will also notice this part which says permissions used in last 24 hours. So this will show you which applications have been using your camera, microphone and your location. 
and you can tap these individual items to see a more detailed view. But the best part is the approximate location feature. So inside settings, what you will need to do is go into location and then tap on app permissions. Over here, you can tap on a specific app name and disable this feature, use precise location. And once you disable this, the application will only be able to access your approximate location and not the exact location. So this is a very useful feature for applications that do not work without the location permission. Also, check this out guys, the option to hide the camera cutout is now back. So there you go, we are now in Instagram and as you can see the camera cutout is no longer visible. Let's try another app. So here's gallery, again the camera cutout is not visible. So this option is available in settings, tap on display, scroll down to full screen apps and then tap on camera cutout. And from over here you will be able to configure this option for individual applications. Oh and one thing that I absolutely love about this update is the elastic overstretch UI. So if you go to settings and if you scroll down and as the menu hits the bottom, you'll notice that there is an overstretch elastic effect. And I absolutely love this. Feels very nice and smooth. So I guess that pretty much wraps it up for this video. It's about 4 a.m. here. And whenever the update arrives on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, I will make another video. And guys, goes without saying, if you are not subscribed, subscribe to the channel and follow me on my social media accounts. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer them. So thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in another video.